All right, what's up, guys? Pet Man, Matt Morrow, Carolina Varsity. Taking a look now at our uh, top five series continuing on. Uh, we looked at some of the top five coaching staffs. and uh, Appreciate the support on that video. I had some very nice comments uh, that were sent to me. Uh, but thanks once again to um, all the great coaches out there that do such a good job. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the top five quarterbacks in the Charlotte Conference's best to last. And just as a reminder... This is a preseason edition. <laughs> I want to stress that. And uh, these um, rankings consist of uh, three conferences uh, in the Charlotte region and uh, four A ranks the uh, IMEC, uh, South MEC 7, and the Southwestern Conference. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my list. Um, there were a lot of quarterbacks obviously doing a good job. Uh, but the main thing I'm looking at in the preseason rankings are um, performances that were done on the field, um, the, the length of time that they've uh, been quarterbacking, so I did favor the upperclassmen. And um, just just the, th the way I think they command a team from a leadership perspective uh, as well as uh, coordinating the offense that they run. All right, so number five on the list is Khalil Gilliam of East Mech. Um, he's got prototypical size. Um, he doesn't get to throw it as much so far. I think he will get to throw it a little bit more this year, uh, especially with the loss of Kamal Howard. Um, and then him being in the offense for four years, I think is really going to um, let Coach Schubert open things up a little bit, which he's done in the past. Um, he's done that in Olympic uh, when he had Lucas Beatty uh, back in the day. Uh, slinging it around down there and it set some passing records. So he has that in his offense. Um, I think Gilliam will have a uh, breakout season and you're going to see him uh, kind of make a name for himself here in Charlotte um, as a quarterback in that uh, East Mac offense. Uh, number four on the list is Jack Cherry from Providence. And um, this kid came on big time last season uh, when Providence made some changes in their offense. If you guys remember, um, the first year on the Brad Bowles, they were a really, really heavy run team with a lot of old school type option uh, kind of stuff. And um, last year he changed to a spread system. And uh, Jack Cherry was the beneficiary of it. And um, I saw this kid when he played Harding. And um, he, he was throwing the ball all over the field, man, and, and really making some nice plays and uh, throws. And he can run a little bit too um, when he needs to. Uh, so I, I really like um the way he plays the game, uh, commands that offense, and is also a leader uh, for that Providence team that, you know, is getting a bit overlooked and I think will uh, turn some heads once um, pads really start popping later on this week in scrimmages and, of course, as we get into the start of the season. All right, so number three on the list is Braden Hawkins, uh, the quarterback at Myers Park, and, you know, you guys – um, have heard the stories about him uh, changing schools, uh, so forth and so on. But when you look at him on the field and, you know, you take a look at his film, he, he's definitely one of the top ones in the area. He throws a nice ball, uh, good, strong arm. Uh, he's being recruited by several programs. Um, and, you know, Coach Chadwick has been high on him uh, so far and what he's seen since he's been at Myers Park. So, uh, you know, I'm expecting big things from him. He's got a lot of a nice um, weapons in that offense with Elijah Bowick and Muhammad on the outside. And now with Kamal Howard joining the backfield, um, you know, that Myers Park offense has got a lot of things that um, to play with. And, you know, Braden Hawkins is going to be the one, you know, pulling the trigger. And um, he's going to be one of the better ones in the Charlotte area. Uh, number two on the list, uh, Luke Hefferly, uh, the quarterback at R.G. Kale. I think he gets overshadowed a little bit. Uh, you know, we had so many good quarterbacks last season. Um, you know, with all those guys leaving, um, you know, he was one of the juniors that, you know, had a really good season, um, but kind of got lost in the shuffle with so many great senior quarterbacks we had uh, last year. And um, he put up some really good numbers, and he had some nice guys to throw to out there at R.G. Kell. Now, some of those guys are gone, um, new head coach, but, you know, you look at the talent um, individually, um, he's one of the one of the best, and I got him at number two in the preseason rankings. Um, I really like his arm. He's got good prototypical size, stands tall in the pocket. Uh, he can move in the pocket, not truly a dual threat guy, but he can move around and make plays. 
And um, he's smart. He's very smart. Picks up the offense well. I know with the tempo that Coach Bray wants to run in R.J. Kell, um, I think he, he's going to, you know, excel in that on the offensive side of the ball. And uh, the number one quarterback may surprise you a little bit, maybe a name that you don't know um, just um, that well just yet. Um, that's Dylan Ernie at Olympic. And, uh, you know, I was really impressed. Um, and I've seen him a couple times in the preseason. And I've watched this kid the past couple years. He played um, under Coach Wilkes previously in a, a wing T kind of offense, and he was still able to showcase um, some throwing ability. And, um, you know, he's been playing for a couple years, and now with uh, Coach Jason Fowler coming in, you know, spreading the offense out, um, he's got a really strong arm. And um, I like his um, receiving targets that he has, and Coach Fowler um, – puts him in some really good positions to be successful and um you know i'm excited to see what he can do uh this year as a senior in that uh kind of offense that will uh showcase his abilities uh to the max um so those are the top five quarterbacks um in the preseason rankings that i have and i know trust me i know there are some very good quarterbacks out there that were not on that list but we'll do this again in the mid-season and uh, we'll re-rank them. And if you want, you know, to be on that list in the midseason or feel like you should be on there, you know, you get it done on the field and the shine will come. Trust me. And um, we'll put it out there. Also, I just did. I do want to say that after all the top five lists are done, we're going to do an under the radar list of players from any position. And if you feel like that um, you're not getting the shine or recognition um, you're deserving, uh, let me know. Uh, reach out to me on Twitter at PetmanCV, P-E-P-M-A-N-C-V, and um, send me a message. And, um, you know, we'll reach out to your coach. And uh, if your coach agrees, uh, I will put you out there. Um, that's what Carolina Varsity is all about, recognizing as many kids as we can and getting your name out there. Uh, so thanks for watching. Once again, this is the preseason list. Uh, the midseason list will come. Uh, right before conference play. So that's around week five, week six. So stay tuned for that. And congratulations to those ones that uh, did make the list this time around. Appreciate the support and thanks for watching.